What's up guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to have a look at how to make this funky display base. You can think of it as a meadow or a little woodland clearing. If you're interested in how I painted the miniature, there's a typically epic PDF guide available that takes you through the whole process. For the plinth, we're going to use this empty centrum vitamin bottle. Alright, so we're going to start off by cutting the top part of the bottle off with a saw, cutting through that recess section, trim any excess plastic away with a knife, and sand it down so it's flat. If there's any mould lines, remove them with a sharp knife and some sandpaper. In order to create a base for this, we're going to place the cap on a piece of plastic card, using a pencil to mark a section big enough to cover the bottom. Cut that out with a pair of scissors and attach it to the bottom of your base with some thick super glue. If you have some, you can use an activator spray to speed up the drying time. Once the glue is set, use your scissors again to trim around the edge, getting rid of as much of the excess plastic as you can. Then use a sharp knife to trim any that's still sticking out the sides. It's likely that your edge won't look very pretty, so use a bit of sandpaper to smooth it down. If there's any gaps around it, use some more of your super glue to fill the seam, sanding it down smooth once the glue has set. To ensure we can attach our model, we'll need to drill a hole into the middle of the lid. It already has this handy indentation right in the centre, so we can start off by using a knife to make a hole in that small recess. Then you're going to grab a micro drill bit, roughly the same width as the pin that you're going to be using and then simply just drill a hole through the lid, using that guide mark that you made with the knife to help you. Once you've done that, use a bit of your pin wire and just check it fits in the hole. So I'm using a paper clip for mine, I find they work quite well. Now we want a small border around the outside of our scene, so to create that we're going to use this small gaming base as a template. Put that on a thin cork sheet. Hold it in place and use your fingers to tear around the edge. Place your little bit of cork onto the centre of the plinth and use a pencil to draw around the edge. Then we can grab our trusty hobby knife again and just cut some rough gouges into the surface, making sure not to go past that pencil outline. This is going to help to get a better bond with the glue and the outline is going to ensure that we don't end up with any cut marks appearing on our border. Alright, so once you've done that, put some super glue onto your bit of cork and stick it onto the base. Just try and match it up to your outline so that you retain that clean edge around the outside. If you have one, you can also use an activator spray here to speed up the drying time of the glue. Next, we're going to use some milliput, so cut an equal amount of each stick and just mix them together. If you like, you can use a bit of water while you're doing this. It makes mixing it a bit easier and tends to stop it from sticking to your fingers. Once that's mixed, set it aside for about 20 minutes before you use it. 20 minutes later. Then you're going to take another bit of putty and this time just smoosh it directly onto the cork, pulling the edges out to the side with your thumbs so that it covers over the side of the cork. You're trying to create a bit of a fade by stretching it thin as it gets closer to the outside edge of the base. That way you create a subtle hill so that the miniature is going to be raised up slightly. You can use a little water to aid in thinning out the edge of the putty if you want. If there's any bits of cork still showing, add a bit more milliput on top and keep using your fingers to press it down, still aiming for that rough hill shape. When you're pulling it thin around the edges, if you find that it goes too far, just use a tool to scrape off the excess to get that nice clean border back. Here I'm using the back of a hobby knife for that. Again, use your thumbs to tease out the edge of the putty, pulling it thin so it kind of fades into the surface of the base. Now to make sure our model can actually sit well on top, we'll need to create a small flat area in the middle and you can use a sculpting tool for this or just find something that's roughly the same size as the base of your model. So this is a mini from the Seventh Continent board game. All I'm going to do is simply press the base of it into the milliput to make a small flat area. 
Now this is going to create a bit of an indentation as well. So I'm going to use another sculpting tool and just press that ridge down so that our miniature will be standing proud of the surface and not sunken down into it. Then I'm going to make the putty a bit irregular by poking at it with the tool just to break it up a bit and get rid of that smooth finish. When we glue our texture on top of this later, we don't want it to be super uniform as it will seem a bit artificial. So if we mess up the putty like this, we'll be able to create a much more believable finish to the ground scatter. Alright, so there you can see how it looks from the side. Doesn't look like much right now, but once we add our textures and throw a bit of colour on, it's going to change quite dramatically. One of the cool things about using this screw top base is if you get bored with the scene, you can just unscrew the top and screw a new one on. And it's pretty easy to remove the model because you can still access the pin from the underside. So in order to get an interesting texture, we're going to use a bunch of different materials. And these are all from Diodum. This one is called Moss Forest. Uh, here we have dry pastures, dark woods, scorched earth and some stony dirt. And we also have some bog standard baking soda for the finer textures. Alright, so basically what we're going to do is take a bit from each tub and just plop it into a little container. I'm using a plastic shot glass, but anything similar is going to work just fine. I think the problem with just using sand alone is it has a very uniform appearance and actual ground tends to have quite a lot of variation to it. So by mixing things up and using a bunch of different textures, we'll be able to simulate that diversity thus giving us a much better effect. Once you have them all in the cup, give it a good mix with something like a pencil or an old brush handle. The heavier stuff is going to naturally want to sink to the bottom, so just try your best to get it well distributed. And oops, I forgot the baking soda, so I'll just throw some of that in there too. Alright, so once that's mixed, grab an old paintbrush and put a pretty generous amount of PVA glue onto the milliput. Don't be stingy with it because you want this to stick quite well. Next, you're simply going to take your shot glass and dump the mixture on top. It's a highly technical procedure as you can see. To ensure you get a nice solid bond with the glue, you can use a soft makeup brush to gently press the scatter down into the base. That will make sure that it's pushing into the glue rather than just balancing on top of it. Tap off the excess and have a look over the surface to see if there's any bits that look a bit out of place. Just pull those off and get rid of them. You have quite a lot of time before the glue sets so you can just take your time with this. If there's any big gaps you can add a little glue and dump some more of your mixture on top. I also like to add some baking soda at the end just to help fill in any gaps and add some more subtle textures. Once you're finished with that, you can use your makeup brush just to clean up around the edges to get rid of any rogue bits of grit. Alright, so once the glue has dried, you're going to use Zenithal Priming by first spraying it with some black primer. Then when it's dry, you're going to spray it again, this time using white. Holding the can from above at about a 60 degree angle to the base, just turning the base around as you spray it with the primer. And that's going to leave you with this cool effect where the white paint has picked out all the little details in the texture, effectively highlighting everything for you. Before we start to paint this, we need to make sure that the mini is actually going to sit well on the base. So we're going to take the lid off and just drill through from the underside. We already have a hole there from earlier so it's pretty easy to do this. Just keep going until you break through to the other side. Once you have that, slot your mini into the hole and make sure that it sits ok. You might have to knock a bit of texture off to get a nice fit. Alright, so we'll just put that away and we'll make a start on the painting. We're going to do this in quite a simple way. So first we're going to load up with some of this Vallejo dark brown wash. And you can see here how nice the texture of the surface is with all those different elements on it there. It has a really good dynamic look to it. 
To paint it, we're going to first randomly place the brown wash on a few spots on the surface, putting a fair amount of the wash on there so that it stays wet for some time. Next, we'll go back to our palette and grab some of this Vallejo Dark Cat Green Wash. And we'll apply that in much the same way as before, but this time we'll pull the wash into the edges of the brown patches. So this is going to make the two washes mix on the surface. Because they're so thin, they essentially flow into each other, forming a nice transition between the two colours with very minimal effort on your part. It's a bit like a lazy wet blend. Maybe we can make that brown patch a bit stronger, just adding some more of that brown wash on top. And then we'll come back with our green to fill in the surrounding area. Again, pulling the wash into the brown so that they mix on the surface. Try and make sure that you get the edges covered with the wash so that you don't leave any of that primer without colour. You can also add more of the wash to any spots where you want to darken the colour. What you're going for is a nice earthy look to the surface. Combining the green and the brown tones is really effective at giving you a fairly realistic colour. Once that dries, it's going to look something like this. Alright, so to continue, we're going to add a bit of colour variation now. So for that, I took some of this Chimera Magenta and mixed in a little Chimera Phalo Blue green shade to get this nice dark purpley colour. Then I thinned that down quite considerably with some water. And we'll apply that to the base, much like we did with the other washes placing it on fairly randomly in small patches. But instead of using the wet blending, we're instead going to tease the edges out slightly with a second brush so that we don't leave any harsh lines. We want all the colours to sort of fade into one another quite naturally. When you're working on a highly textured surface with paint this thin, it's actually really difficult to mess this up. So don't worry about trying to do this feathering technique when you're working on bases, it's actually really easy. The only real danger here is if you don't have the paint thin enough and you end up putting on really obvious blobs of colour. You don't want that, so it's better to try and over thin it, just in case. Because you can always just add another layer if, you, if it's not strong enough. So go a bit thinner than you think you'll need and you can't go far wrong. Just keep on adding little patches of colour here and there on the surface until we like the look. But be careful when you're doing this that you don't add so many patches that you end up totally covering the base. You're just looking to add some variation to the colour. To continue, we're going to take some of that phalo blue and again dilute it down with some water so that it's a very thin glaze consistency. Then we'll repeat the process by putting on little patches of colour on the surface, again fairly randomly and using a second brush to tease out the edges of the glaze so we don't leave any obvious blobs of colour. Adding these glazes in is going to help make the surface more interesting, but it's also going to darken it down somewhat. And our miniature is quite bright, so we want to make the base dark to offer a nice contrast and make it stand out against the background. Once you're happy with how it's looking, dry it off with a hairdryer. That just speeds things up a little bit. Here you can see the effect we've built up with those different colours. It gives you a really nice variation and it's a lot more fun than just painting it with a single colour and then going over it with something like a dry brush. Now that we have that initial colour on there, we'll start to add some layers of more natural looking elements. So get some more of your PVA glue and randomly dab a few non-distinct shapes onto the ground. Try not to use big dollops of the glue when you're doing this, lay it on fairly thin. We're going to be adding some grass on top and if the glue is too thick, You'll find that you end up with too much grass stuck onto it. It will just stick on in a big clump and look kind of silly. Don't totally cover the base with the glue either. Leave a good amount of the ground showing through underneath. Next we're going to pick up some of this static grass. What colour you use is up to you. I've gone for this nice muted green. 
as I think it fits quite well with the colour of our ground. Scoop some of that up. I'm using a little bit of wood for that, but you can use whatever you like. Now we're going to let the grass fall from a bit of a height by gently tapping our scoop so that we allow the bits of grass to separate slightly. If you just dump it on top, again it kind of clumps up and you get a crappy effect. Now I don't want the, the grass to be standing up, so we're not using a static grass applicator here. We're just going for more of a tramp down effect as if people have been walking about on it. So once you have that glue covered, grab a nice clump of the grass and dump it on top. Then use your scoop to sort of press it down into the glue. This kind of creates a bit of a cushion between the scoop and the grass that you want to stick to the glue. It's a bit like when you use the, the makeup brush to push the texture into the PVA. It just ensures that we get a nice bond between the grass and the glue. Tip the excess off and give it a few taps to get rid of the unstuck bits. The glue will still be a bit wet so it's a little tricky to get a sense of how it actually looks. But again you can use a hairdryer to speed up the drying time if you're in a hurry. Once it's dry you can use a makeup brush to get rid of any loose bits of grass from the surface. It's also a good idea at this point to paint the rim black so that you don't have all that white distracting you. It just puts a nice frame around it and gives you a better idea of what it actually looks like. Uh, I've gone ahead and put the miniature on just, just to see if it works well on the base and I think it will look pretty good actually. I like the way it stands out against the dark earth. So I'm happy to glue it down at this stage. To do that we're going to use a straightened paper clip and just place a bit of the super glue on the pin and a small amount on the underside of the model. Then I can actually just pull the pin down from underneath rather than pushing the model down from above. It's just another benefit of these screw top bases. You don't need to touch the model when you're attaching it. Once the glue is dried, I can just make that pin a bit shorter by snipping it off with some clippers. So if we ever want to change the base, all we'll have to do is push the pin up from below and that will pop the mini off the base really easily. To continue, we're going to add a few little tufts and also some flowers. So I have a bit of a selection from Gamers Grass and also Army Painter. And what we're going to do is pull a few random tufts out just so that we have a nice selection to work with. And so that they are not all the same, we're going to take a few and just rip them into bits so that we have a nice mix of different shapes and sizes. Then it's just a case of experimenting and placing the tufts in different spots until you find a combination that you like the look of. Try and get them well spaced out without obscuring too much of the model. Also remember to leave room so that you can add your flowers later. These white flowers from Gamers Grass are really excellent, I can highly recommend them. Again, just experiment and try and find a good spot to place them. You don't need to rush this, you can take your time and move them around until you're happy. Like here for example, I think it would look better with a bigger clump of flowers, just to fill out the space more. Yeah, I think that one looks a lot better. I can recommend farting about a bit here by tweaking the position of the various tufts. You don't want to glue something down and then decide that you don't like it, so it's worth spending a bit of extra time to make sure you have everything where you want it. Ideally, you'll want to use tweezers for this as it's pretty fiddly work. Also, those white flowers tend to stick together in a little mass if you pick them up with your fingers. So tweezers are very helpful at avoiding that. Once you're positive you have them in the right spot, just pick them up one at a time and place a dot of glue on the surface. Then press the tuft down into the glue. You might want to use a brush to help press them down. Just to make sure that you have a nice bond. When you're doing this, be sure to check the edges around the tuft and look for any that aren't quite attached to the ground. So you might need to stick those down with a bit more glue if you find any. It can really ruin the effect if they're not properly attached, so it's worth double checking just to make sure. 
All right, so just keep working your way around the base, stacking each tuft down with a spot of glue. As a finishing touch, we're going to actually color the flowers. But before we do that, we'll just paint the rest of the room black to neaten it up. All right, so take some of that purple glaze that we made earlier and we'll use that to color the flowers. All you're going to do is lightly touch the brush to the little white bits. However, be careful not to linger too long on them or the water is going to start to detach them from the stems. The glaze should essentially be absorbed into the white blobs, so it should be really easy to paint them. Just briefly touch them with the brush and move on to the next one. You don't have to paint all of them, you can leave some white showing through here and there if you like. On the other side we have a much bigger clump of flowers, so we're going to add more variation there so that it's not boring to look at. I'll start off with this blue glaze and again we'll just touch a few of the flowers with the brush and allow the glaze to be absorbed into the small white blobs, just to give them a bit of colour. If you want a more obvious colour you can apply more layers but I quite like this subtle pastel quality you get from a single application but feel free to experiment and change things up as and when you feel like it. To continue we're going to make another glaze, this time with some Chimera Magenta. Again just adding some water to it to get it really thin and transparent. And we'll use that to pick out a few more of the flowers. So again these are all colours that I've already used on the main figure. It always helps if you can bring some of the colours from the miniature down onto the base to help tie them together so that you have a good harmony between the two. Alright so we're going to take that purple glaze again and just pick out a few more of the flowers. It's quite a simple process really but it makes a pretty big difference to do this. You could obviously just leave these white, again it's up to you. We'll take that blue again now and add some variation to that little clump at the front, just picking out a few here and there. So the blue will essentially mix with the purple that's already there, giving us a subtle change in colour. That's something else that you can try experimenting with, just glazing over colours that you've already picked out with a different tone. It's a good way to add some subtle nuances, you can get some pretty cool effects that way. Alright so I think that will do this, I really like how it's looking, all we need now is to screw the cap onto the base of the plinth and we're done. You can see that it gives a really cool backdrop to the miniature and helps it to stand out. It looks dark green but it still works quite well because we've managed to include all those different tones from the model in there as well. If you'd like to support the channel, gain exclusive access to longer ad free video content as well as automatic membership to our active Discord community. Become a patron today for as little as $1 a month.